right, good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here. I wasn't sure. 9.30 is kind of early for this committee. You guys had to come back to school for this, um, but we're glad you did. My name's Jim Kane. I teach English here, and I also coordinate this INT 101 program, which is a course we've had for a number of years now, to help our students transition in this first year of college. We find the transition semester, the first semester, is the toughest one for most people. It's the, you know, the one of the biggest changes for students. So what I want to do is give you kind of an overview of what's involved in that class, uh, because you can be a, a support in this. In other words, if you know what we're doing, um, in your relationship with the students, hi, there's, there's more chairs, there's some chairs over here. Um, but in your support, this uh, relationship with your kids, um, if we're talking some of the same language, if you know what's being delivered from our end, um, and you're talking to them, if there's issues, problems, uh, needs for motivation, uh, we're talking the same language, we work together. More you know the better about what's going on here. Um, before I start on what I do, they ask me to put, send it, give this form to you so that we hand these things out. And this has to do with, uh, it doesn't have to do with my course at all, but it has to do with your access to records. You may or not may be aware of this, maybe not, but if your, um, your son or daughter is 18 or older, they're technically treated as an adult in terms of academic records. And that means there's a confidentiality issue with that stuff. For you guys to get access to that information, despite the fact that you're probably financing your education, uh, for you to get access to that information, you have to have your sons or daughters approval. Uh, so this form is a form that does that, that um, tells our registrar that they can give you any information So everybody should have one of these forms. Um, it also allows, um, well, any any academic records that the school has, the registrar has grades and things like that, or any of the agents of the school, such as our counselors, uh, our instructors. Um, Technically, we need to have approval before we can talk to you about um, specific like academic documents or information that's part of their formal record, right? So what you want to do is fill this out for yourself, find your son or daughter and get their signature on it. Um, and really most of them are fine with that. They want to share it. They want to know what's going on. And the best benefit of doing this is we can work together to, um, if there's any issues, to discuss and solve and stuff. And then we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to worry about it. Or am I allowed to talk to you about this issue, whatever it is? Um, so, and if you have questions about this thing, um, actually, our registrar is the best person to talk to about it. They're kind of the contact person on this aspect of information sharing, right? And they'll be able to talk to you about it. What you'll need to do: hold on to this form and get it filled out. Um, and then you can return it to any really Newman authority if you see somebody so that's a, you know Newman. Um, because you might be able to fill it out today and get it back to us. You might need to send it in with your son or daughter later or something like that. Um, well, that, that I guess. Any questions about that? Oh, All right, because I want to talk, we only have a half hour, which is a lot. I want to talk a little bit about this course. And I have up on the board, I don't know if you see that, a few things. All right. Um, there'll be a chair, so just have to kind of find those. There's a chair there. You can use that chair to move those headphones. Thank you. Alright. Okay, see those two tables do really well. 
Cool. All right, here's what we got. Think about these three categories. Think about when it's, what's necessary for somebody to succeed, uh, not only in college, but in life. In terms of these three categories of things, the qualities, the inner qualities of a person or the attitudes of a person, the behaviors, like what would you see? But think about students in college. What behaviors would you like to see if you're visualizing? And what is your son or daughter doing that's going to lead to success? And what kind of choices do they make? And what we mean, that, or what I'm looking for there is this versus that, in other words. What are some of the things that may be tough choices in your college? Um, and what I'm looking for is what you think are some of any of these things, qualities, behaviors, or choices that they're going to have to deal with to be successful. Um, I'm going to ask you guys what do you think first. What comes to mind if we look at quality list? Positive attitude. See the word attitude? Let's take positive attitude. Right. What else? Honesty. 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 Good one. Energy. Good one, too. Energy. Oh, you're good. What else? Throw, give us some more things. What are some qualities? Only more people can't fit in. Work ethic. Work ethic. What other qualities? Resilience. Say that again. Personal. Personal. Very good. On time. <laughs> On time. Yeah. Now, that might be well. Okay, that starts to look like a behavior. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, is on time. Mm -hmm. right? um, very good. What else? Desire. Desire. Very good. Outgoing. Outgoing. Very good. Since we got a good list, let's move to the behavior problem. Now, what actions do you see someone who's successful, whether it's in school or work, what do they do? And being on time is one of them, so you probably put that as on to start. They have a goal. Okay, well, is that something you can see? In fact, I'm having a goal to try to fit in the other category. Because I'm, well, this is a distinction. I'll explain why I question it. Concentration. Very good. Focus. Focused. Focused. Um, how do you know somebody's focused? They work hard. They work hard. Yeah. Work. <laughs> they work. Um, they get work done. Get work done. That's because you can see it. And that's why I'm going to emphasize what we mean by behaviors. We mean actions that can be seen. Right? So we see work done. Um, confidence. Confidence. That's the quality. Be fair. Be prepared? No, be fair. Oh, be fair. Um, Works well with others? Yeah. yeah. Works well with others? That's good. Study. Studies. Yeah. Those are actions that take. Organized? Yeah. It's, it's organized. Now, these are things, behaviors are, things they're going to do. Day in and day out. Goes to class. To meet those, go to class. Very good. Now we're going to go to class. One time. Is that other one? Able to, to go on their own without having their parents out. Um, yeah, um, work independently, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, not work on the other things, but <clears throat> uh, manage themselves. The idea of managing time, managing time, but also managing, uh, well, that goes on organization. But where they need to be at what time and that they're prepared, things like that. Preparation again. Okay, we're starting to see things. Now how about we move to the next category? What do you think are some of the tough choices they may have to make? Party or study. Party or study. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the first ones right there. Um, and under that, you could probably put a whole bunch of things under party. It's going to be that a whole of Party just could be um, spending time with friends, maybe yeah, not right. party, but, going to the mall, but yeah, going to the mall. So time with friends or stuff. Uh, what other kind of choices? Sleep. 
Say that again. Sleep or go to class. Yeah, or go to sleep or go to class. Who's the one that said, is that your son? Or your no, who's the one that said the first thing? There's some there's some daughter didn't want to come here until 9 30 on the time. <laughs> no, that was you. You said that one. But well, she was here all night last night. night. Yeah, she was late, so she's not gonna get up early. But that's the sleep or study, sleep, sleep or be ready. Right. Um what else? Uh, any other choice you can think of? I mean those are you know, the big ones. It's like maybe working and working a job. Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, work, work with money, you know, a job or stuff. Um, that's like a harder choice. I mean, I feel it. Some people have no choice. Right. Well, that's what we got to get down to. Um, there, and I think well, one of the things we emphasize is you do have a choice, but there's trade-offs, and you have to consider all your trade-offs. Um, uh, you really have no choice. But that means, in a way, you've already made your choice. <laughs> but, um, being, a leader, being a leader or a follower? Yeah, very good. Being a leader or a follower. And that could be rewarded other different ways about like stepping up, doing something uh, independently, or um, uh, even like speak, speak up in class or don't. But independent thinking. Come to class prepared? Yeah. Well, that's one of those action behavior things. Um, but the, 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 the choice is being prepared or not prepared, you know, like being ready or not ready. Um, so we get to joining a club or not, or, or you know, being alone. And for some, it, that need to socialize is a, is a problem and a choice. How much or how to overcome maybe their own resistance um, or fears or anxieties. Uh, what you're seeing. Think of anything else while we're in these categories. Yeah. Um, do you think of anything else? You're doing some good things. Let me uh, pass out some of these things. Not staying in touch with the family. They have a choice to do that. Unless they're threatened. Pass these things around. Give us two of our dogs. Pass these things around. Oh, um, I think I'll probably move with your help. I mean, unless you can stay up here. Thanks so much. Okay, I wanted to involve you in this thinking. Um, because what we realized is, I mean, this course, years and years ago, started as a study skills course, figuring that students could always use a little help with study skills, especially when that changed to college. But what we learned was, is giving people study skills doesn't really matter unless they're motivated in the first place. In other words, if you tell people what to do with it, they don't really engage in it, they don't really care, it doesn't matter. Um, and what we've learned through studying um, success strategies, people who have people who success, who succeed, is that there are behaviors, attitudes, and choices that make a difference. That success isn't about doing specific, well, it is about doing some specific things. And it's not about just getting instruction like how to succeed in college or do these things. But it's about somebody questioning themselves on these very issues and being prepared to think about um, these issues. So the course we've designed is based around these concepts on this first page here, those eight concepts. It says about choices. And notice those words, accept self-responsibility, discover self-motivation, master self-management, Employee interdependence, um, gain self-awareness, adopt lifelong learning, uh, develop emotional intelligence, believe in themselves. All these things hit on, I mean, even though they're not exact same words, it's the same concepts in the quality and attitude category. These are the things that really matter the most, and they all focus on that becoming independent, thing, taking charge of their own choices, thinking about and like, reflecting on their choices, their behaviors, and making those choices um, in ways that lead them to their goals. So the program we use is called, it's called on course, the book text we use, should be this thing. This is a book for this class. Um, and it uses that model of, okay, your, your career path, your course in life, is to reach some kind of goal, some manner of success, however you see it. And we're aware that many students at this point, they don't know exactly what that is. Yes, where do you want to be in five years? Well, I want to graduate but I'm not sure. 
and some of them are sure. Some of them I want to be a nurse, or I want to be an accountant, or I want to be you know a biologist or something. Um, and others, they're all over the place, and we know that. So what we do is you know we help them figure out what goal is going to get you there to the point where you do know what you want. Um, but what course do you want to trap? And it's got to be a course based on success. So how do they see success? So we ask them that right from the beginning. We try to get them to kind of like narrow that down and help them put it in terms, even if they don't know what they want to be when they grow up, you know. Well, what do you want to be like as a person? So that you're prepared to make that choice and no matter what you want to be, you're going to be good at it. It's successful at it, right? So how do you see success? And very often then it gets back to certain qualities. And most of them want to be the way you describe them. In other words, they want to be responsible. They want to be um, and they, nobody wants to be a fail. Nobody wants to be confused or you know, make bad choices. They will make bad choices. We all do. Uh, and we're aware of that. So the trick, the, the guidelines for this course is to get, set that goal for what is their goal, what is their, uh, their path, their course to success, and then to recognize when are they going off course. And when they recognize going off course, how can they regulate? and how can they get back on? And so we give them the tools to do that. Now, sometimes they see this course, well, in the beginning, it's a nice course because they meet once a week. And by the way, at the back of the sheet is a list of the features of the class in terms of how it's set up, kind of things that they offer. So you can see that. But we meet once a week, and their teacher for this class is their academic advisor. Um, and we found that's a really good thing because that, that way they see them once a week this first semester or any help they need with the technical issues of advising, they have access to something. And that's part of what we do in this course, is give them the, the small details. In other words, what you have to do if, you're, um, if you need to drop a class or add a class, or what you need to do when it comes time to register again the next spring. Or if you're thinking of changing your major or deciding what your major, who do you talk to and what do you do. All those little details is part of this course as well. And that way they have access to that advice for the first year. Um, but it also, again, puts us in a role that we who are advisors of, we're more coaches than we are teachers, um, and sometimes mentors. And um, our job is to help them, again, identify their goals and then coach them in ways that can help achieve those things, right? So the, I, I think the same, the concerns you have as parents, um, I think we understand these are the same concerns we have as educators, that Students aren't here just for academics. They're here because they're developing as human beings. They're developing as into adults. And what we hope is they're going to, you know, we're going to give them the guidance to develop into independent, responsible, self-motivated, excited adults. You know, we're going to be um, some of these words: respectful, thoughtful. They're going to be uh, good at what they do. And we like that word good. This is a mission-based institution where we don't have to be afraid to educate the values, you know, to, and to encourage the kind of students. And we believe that our graduates and our, our young people should be good people wherever they go. In other words, whatever job they have, it isn't just to put in time and take a paycheck. It's to make a positive difference where they are, um, to be a leader where they are. And to be a leader doesn't mean you have to be the boss or have the title of leader in your head. But the leader is the one that makes smart choices and supports good choices. And you, so, you know, leaders step up when needed. They voice the opinion of the right choice, you know, and we want our students to be able to do that. And I think you want the kids to do that. You want to be proud of what they do, what they choose. So this course works a lot on all of these things. And I often see the course as, you know, I call it big picture, little picture. And the big picture is let's step it, step back and look at the big goals and look at the qualities, look at the things that are important in your life, the long range kind of things, and those inner qualities. But then the little picture, what are the details? What are you doing today that's going to help you meet those goals? So are you waking up on time? You know, we talk about time management. We show them different models of organizing their day and their week and their semester so that they can see what's coming, so they can be prepared so they know that every choice they make either is keeping them on track or is taking them off track. Um, so when they make that choice about, you know, staying up with friends until 1, 2 in the morning, when they have a class at 9 the next morning, um, 
that would, you know, they have to ask, is that a wise choice? And we have this part of it, I think it's chapter four of our book, is called the wise choice process. And so we talk about every time you reach a fork in the road, a place where you have to hesitate to think, uh-oh, should I do this or should I do that? We have, we try to give them a thinking process. Okay, pause before you jump in and make that choice and think about the consequences of those things. And that's why that thing about sometimes they have no choice. When we say, well, let's think about it. Do you have no choice or not? Um, and sometimes they were really tough choices. But we teach them that to take responsibility for that choice. Sometimes missing a class ends up being a choice they have to make. Um, and, or, or the idea of work. Say they have a work study job and a sport and their full load of classes. Is it too much? And they may have to choose to either cut back on work, cut back on sports, or take a hit on their academics. Um, who's the one to tell them the right choice? Now, as parents, you can probably tell them what you think is your version of the right choice. We can tell our version of the right choice. What we want to develop in them is the ability to make that choice themselves and stand by it, you know, and take the consequences. Part of that means letting them make what you or I might think of dumb choices. Um, they might think, you know, well, I got this exam, you know, tomorrow or Thursday or something like that, but there's this great concert coming up this weekend and I'll never get a chance to go again. And I'm going to go with all these friends and we all want to go. I can study, I can get all my work done. They'll tell you, you know, I can do it, I can get everything done, be ready for the exam. So you think, oh, I don't think that's a good idea. Well, they might do it anyway, right? And they go to the party and this and that and they get a D or an F in that exam. All right, that's, that's learning experience. Think about that now. Think of the choice you made, think of the consequence. Is that really the consequence you want? And if that comes up again, how are you gonna handle it? And we have scenarios. Every chapter of this book has stories and scenarios like that here based on real college experiences. And that's one of the things we start with. Here's a story of a student who did this, blah, blah, blah. here's all the stuff that happened. And then we debate and we talk about Okay, well, whose fault was it, or whose responsibility was it? Who, uh, how could it be uh, been different? And we talk through those scenarios. And little case studies like that, I think, are good examples um, for your students to like, visualize themselves in that kind of situation, because that situation is going to happen. Um, every day, they have to make choices that are going to help them stay on track, you know, or get off track. But and we know that we know nobody's perfect, and we know everybody, all of us in our lives, have made. You know, either wrong choices or no choices that were effective or were good, but our, you know, what we do about it next is what's really important. You know, how do we follow through? So this course is meant to do that. So we have a lot of reflection in it. On, like, they'll have those stories, those discussions, those reflections. We do provide tools and tips for these kind of things that have to do with behaviors. We provide things like uh, study skills, you know, like organization skills, time management skills financial literacy skills, trying to be aware of how to budget, trying to be aware of the costs of things like your college education and how important it is to to make arrangements on time for things like that. Um, how being prepared for, um, well anyway, being prepared for classes and, and what teachers expect and what they need to do. So we inform them as necessary. We don't tell them um, we're trying not to tell them everything they should and should do. We're trying to get them to the point where they they should look at the choices and know what they should and should do. And then know what to do if they messed up. Um, and we provide, that's where the support, or it's important to be, well, team player, outgoing, personable. When I see those things, we're talking about relationships with others. And that's one of the things we talk about here, which is employing interdependence, is recognizing that you're, you don't succeed entirely alone. In other words, we're a community. We help each other succeed. You can't do it by yourself. You have to recognize when you need help, who to get help from, when to ask for it, um, how to collaborate, how to get along. So actually teamwork and building it and uh, working with others is part of it. Um, what else do I need to tell you about the courses? Why do you take any more questions or thoughts? Do the kids get a copy of those? The kids get all, yeah, this stuff is, um, this is, I mean, this is the first thing in the page in the book is where that okay. thing comes from. All right, good. And the book is based on each, there's a chapter of each one of these things. Okay. So yeah, they, and that's why I think it helps that you know the language. Matter of fact, one of the first things we do in the book is talk about 
what they, what they call the book victim creator language. And the victim language is like when, when you, any of us, we all do this, when we complain and blame uh, and put all the responsibility on other people. So, you know, when things don't go your way, how do you handle it? It's like, they are always doing this to me. And what you're going to hear is, there isn't enough parking at noon. Um, this is like the major complaint in every college in the country. That's what the presidents also find out when they meet. They say, what's the major complaint? No parking. But what that means is, when the student's commuting, running late, and they're trying to get to a class, and they two minutes to go, they're looking for the parking spot right in front of their classroom building, and it's not open. Uh, so that means they have to park across the street and walk, and they don't like that. Um, so we use that as this typical example. What do you do about it? You can complain and blame, and if you do the same thing, you're going to have the same problem. If it's always somebody else's fault, you can never fix it. Um, what is within your realm to do something about it? So, and that's creator language. So victim language is when you hear the blaming and the, and it's the teacher's fault, it's the school's fault, it's my friend's fault, it's everybody else's fault, um, or I can't do that, even that kind of language. Um, well, the next step is, well, what can you do? And we work them into that creator language so that we can get them speaking in terms of solutions. So there you go, there's one. Why do you need to leave a little early? And they might say, yeah, but 95 is always crowded. Well, you got to find out either another route or earlier again. <laughs> it's like, and there's nothing wrong with earlier. I learned when I went to college, I, I had to get, it actually helped me a lot. I'd have to get there an hour earlier more to get the parking spot I wanted. But that hour ended up becoming precious study time because um, I just go to some place, find a place to study and prepare for my classes and it made the world a difference. So I tell them stories like that and I realize, okay, if I didn't do that, I would, I would have lost a good hour of study time um, because I wouldn't have used it at home, not like in the morning. So we tell our own stories that way to, to show them they can be creators and solutions. Okay. So when you hear that kind of stuff, when you, um, it helps in a way that you know what we're doing. Wise choices. Um, when they're important in the room, what do you think? Talk it over with your own kids to say, let them think through the solving, the problem solving process. Instead of you just saying right away, well, why don't you do this? Pause and say, what do you think are your options? And what do you think are the best consequences of these options? What do you think is going to give you the best outcome? Um, you're, there are going to be trade offs. There are all the time. So just compare your trade offs. What are you willing to do um, to get the outcome? And when you slow them down and, and they think about it, they usually know what's right. Um, they don't, might not want to choose that kind of thing because they still cling to the other, whatever. But that's growing up. That's life, you know. And so, we, you know, that's what we want to work. So, um, at your end of things, having this kind of language can be helpful. From your end, helping them become problem solvers and creators of solutions. Like, it's okay for them to invent. You don't need the vending, like as far as the blaming goes. You can always blame the world forever, whatever's not going your way. But let's get past the venting and then move on to problem solving, creating a solution. Make sense? Um, so this is what we do in 1909. It's a lot to do. We meet them once a week. Um, we also involve them in class activities, you have to meeting others, so very often our section, I have 20 students and I'll meet with another 20 students. Most of them are grouped by their major, so if they're all nursing students, they're together. If they're undecided, we have groups of undecided and we put e extra emphasis on career options, thinking about choices and, and so that they can uh, learn more about other majors and stuff. Um, right at 10 o'clock. Any other questions? So emphasize in a way the importance of this course. This is the book they need for it. They know that. Um, sometimes they start, they wonder what this course is about. In the beginning it's good because they meet other students and it, everything's nice. And then after a while they start thinking, uh, for some of them, some of them buy right into it and they love it. And then some of them think, oh, I don't need that, you know, because they already know everything. Um, <laughs> and, and the thing is it's, it, I found it provides useful stuff for anybody at any age. Um, I go to this stuff, it reminds me that I have to do these things. Um, so I like to, you know, if anything, emphasize this course and their advisor are the important people your students need to go to if they need help. So, so thanks a lot for listening to me and participating. Um, good luck with me.
Anybody even know where they're going next? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.